What if one of the most powerful countries in Central America, namely the Aztec Empire, survived the colonizers' advances and became the most powerful country in the world? And thanks to the Hindu religion and a few other things, it can enjoy very low autonomy in territories without states. And there are quite a few of them, states without states. Hello imperialists, Lucas here. Initially, our Aztec ruler Montezuma the I changed the course of history by converting the religion from Nahuatl to a more peaceful animistic religion. Unfortunately, we are surrounded by very brutal nations who follow Nahuatl, so it won't be a peaceful process. He began his rule by granting specific privileges to the states. Don't really expect me to pronounce them correctly. Ever. He also sacrificed his successor because he wasn't that good. He also hired a mercenary company because it was cheap, only for that reason. Montezuma didn't intend to lead the army into battle himself, although he wasn't lucky with other commanders. He also sent diplomats to the courts of other countries to gather information there. Otomi, Guamar, and that's it for now. Increasing the amount of troops led his warriors to battle. He also made defensive alliances with countries further south in Mexico. He managed to recruit a capable, cheaper commander whom he hired without hesitation, he also hired an additional priest and a diplomatic advisor. Unfortunately, the first war promised to be very tough. The enemy had a significant numerical advantage. So Montezuma strengthened the defense of his capital and sacrificed a lot to make it difficult for the enemy on our territory. He was prepared for great sacrifices. Maybe Montezuma didn't win all the battles, but he inflicted significant losses on the enemy. Despite the war, he found time to expand the monuments of the capital free third level, which is practically useless anyway, at least for now. After some time, he managed to divide the forces of his enemies, thus defeating their army one by one. He didn't demand too much from the other participants in this war, just money and monthly tribute. Besides, he was already winning battle after battle, and this type of strategy in which he occupied easy-to-capture provinces of the enemy and moved on to their capitals allowed him to quickly end wars. So after many victorious battles and a few years, only his main opponent remained. These wars brought brought great benefits to the Aztecs. They were able to repay all the debts they had incurred. Montezuma ended the war with Otomo by making them an Aztec vassal, simultaneously capturing their capital for the empire. Then he immediately fabricated territorial claims to Guamares, listened to poetry, and attacked the neighboring tribe. This war didn't last long. He also sent Aztec priests to Guamares. Montezuma took advantage of the growing unrest in the Guamares province caused by Aztec priests to adopt a new animistic religion. This also began the process of converting the entire empire to this religion one by one. He also introduced a new modern form of government, autocracy, thank the priests. Unfortunately, this caused him to lose the religious reason to wage war against all Nahuatl countries. Montezuma will now have to effectively use diplomats, or spies, call them what you will. However, the transition to the animistic religion has the greatest advantage that gold is finally appreciated among the Aztecs, and very much so. Montezuma knew it was worth investing in better advisors. Changing religion made the Aztec Empire the most powerful in the region. No one could challenge them, literally. They had no rivals to attack or gain points from. <coughs> The Aztec capital was well developed, especially its infrastructure, mining output increased, and many other investments were made. This rapid development led to the introduction of new solutions. Feudalism. Soon feudalistic solutions were implemented nationwide, speeding up technological advancements. Montezuma also began consolidating the entire region under Aztec rule. Periods between wars were used to train and professionalize the army. Aztec diplomacy actively fabricated claims to neighboring countries. Countries. Sacrificing humans was no longer an option, so alternative solutions were devised. Thanks to these actions, the Aztec Empire achieved great splendor. After conquering more countries, the decision of whether to return to the old religious path became crucial. Would they restore the Nahuatl religion or would the main cult site be destroyed, especially as the Aztecs were nearing the invention of Renaissance institutions? Ultimately, they decided to destroy the temple and stick to a peaceful faith with everyone in the area conquered, there would be no more wars. Effective reforms were also carried out, Aztec art, literature and architecture flourished, spreading the Renaissance spirit quickly. Montezuma too ascended to the throne. However,
However, autonomy grew significantly in the Aztec Empire after recent wars, prompting the current ruler to diminish it significantly through direct actions. In the 77th year, the Aztec Empire finally reached a high level of administrative technological development, allowing it to explore neighboring territories and establish new cities there. Construction of the Aztec fleet began, and an Aztec explorer was trained to venture into the world. How am I supposed to pronounce that name? He set out to explore the world. Meanwhile, the Empire continued to expand its borders. The Aztec explorer didn't live long, literally dying on the first expedition, but at least he discovered some islands and a fleet. By the 84th year, the Aztecs had become one of the world's greatest powers, although they still knew little of this world. After securing peace in northern Mexico, the Aztec Empire moved south. With all conquests completed, a stronger administration began to be established. An Aztec expedition also reached another continent, which isn't necessarily good news for the inhabitants of that region. The Aztec Empire swiftly introduced its administration in the newly annexed territories. Autonomy was further diminished. It was decided that the economy couldn't rely solely on gold mining. So a massive expansion plan was devised for the kingdom over the next 25 years. New measures were also implemented to combat inflation, which honestly speaking wasn't significant. Several temples were erected initially, not too many. Key trading centers were expanded. To facilitate trade, new markets were established in cities. Special edicts were issued in most Aztec territories to expedite the conversion and spread of faith. Workshops also began to emerge in the kingdom, accelerating craftsmanship. This led to increased production efficiency. Finally, a vast body of water was traversed and the black coast was discovered, though it remained beyond our reach for now. News reached us about the birth of colonialism, whatever that entails. The Aztec Empire was so intrigued by the world and its surroundings that it decided to continue expanding. As a potentially massive empire, it had to manage future provincial autonomy adeptly. With the employment of another highly intelligent advisor who wasn't afraid to venture across the vast waters, a new expedition set forth to yet another continent. The peoples inhabiting this new continent continent were significantly behind our kingdom, truly very much so. The first territories in Africa were conquered and Aztec administration began to be established. All of this occurred under the reign of Montezuma III. To conduct wars more effectively on the new continent, the Aztec capital was relocated there. Unfortunately, this sparked a massive rebellion and the emergence of Aztec Mexico, a new Aztec colony. I know it's strange, but I'm not sure how to justify it in the story. But maybe you have an idea? Let me know in the comments. It had plutocratic and expansionist ideas. WTF? Aware of his mistake, the ruler returned to Mexico to reclaim power, but he forgot to transfer funds to himself. The error was rectified, but regaining power proved futile, leading the people to choose a new form of government, a republic. The first elections were won by a candidate focusing on administrative actions. Unfortunately, all this upheaval led to a drastic change in Aztec national ideals as well as those they selected. New privileges were granted and the Aztec nation embarked on the path of oligarchy. Strong leaders were still necessary. Further reforms were needed and implemented. The path Aztec Mexico might now take is very similar to the previous Aztec path. Well, it's literally the same. The colony itself was economically potent and it will be militarily powerful someday. Where's my professionalism? Since the Aztec army had to be rebuilt urgently, additional conscriptions were made everywhere. The Aztec Republic initially attacked northward along the eastern coast of America. The tribes here are very backward. After several years, the Republic secured a significant portion of the eastern coast. Additionally, the Aztecs engaged in colonization along the western coast, aiming more for regional unification. Where will I find these allies? Issues with corruption arose due to a lack of effective suppression measures. The formidable European Empire designated the Aztecs as rivals. 282%, but I also have 100,000 troops. Contact was established with Dutch conquistadors. Now, I've built a network of fortifications along the coast to handle American tribes, facilitating future wars. A comet? Fascinating! In 1549, France attacked the Aztec Republic. The French arrived, but the Aztec army was already in motion as these forces lacked capable leadership. They had no leader at all. These Europeans simply can't fight. Pathetic. Perhaps I'll come to enjoy these wars with France. They're quite Quite lucrative. In Zacatecas, we're expanding a vast mining city to extract even more gold. Yes, there's never too much inflation. The construction of a mighty Aztec fleet commenced, with the formidable ship Hop Hop Khan at its helm, or something like that. The Aztec Empire had a clear focus on exploring unknown lands of America and further colonizing them. How many nations do I have to create? From the Sinth Nation, the Aztecs purchased a province for one and a half thousand gold. Quite a sum for a slice of desert. But this province lies on the shortest path to the sacred 
future Aztec province, Sahib, or however it's pronounced. New institutions likely won't be introduced in these territories. At this juncture, the Aztec kingdom truly ascended to an empire. The anticipation for our rulers was agonizing, waiting for our adversaries to aid us in conquering the new world, only to later subjugate it from them. The Grand Aztec Republic also faced a weighty decision. What form of government to adopt in the future? Yes, there were truly many choices here. It was crucial for the Republic to seize control of trade in the Caribbean region. Aztecs? Seriously, it's blocking me again. They're coming! In the First War, half of the Caribbean was taken, greatly infuriating the Spaniards. Mostly. And isn't it interesting? Now we don't need to create the United States just to build the White House? But regardless, the United States has a very cool thing. I just won't show it to you quickly. The Aztec Empire also embraced a more modern faith, Hinduism. This stirred up a lot of unrest. Oops. In the year 83, it was time for another major expansion, but appropriate measures were taken beforehand. Ultimately, this meant effectively occupying new territories. However, more importantly, with technological advancements, more efficient plantation methods became available, positively impacting the economy and production of the Aztec Republic of Mexico. Aztec Mexico was a powerful and wealthy republic, enabling it to colonize many provinces concurrently. The French Wars of Religion. Perhaps we'll send our representatives there. Aztec coffee plantation's dominance. The Aztec factories turned out to be too productive, irritating Yemen, but we made a profit from it. By 1600, colonizing new territories in America became practically impossible. Native tribes began confederating and European colonies began expanding into larger areas. The Aztec capital was relocated to Maryland, where a white building suitable for the new authorities was found. The Aztec empire became a land of many cultures, nationalities and ideals. Hence, it was decided to change the name and adopt new traditions and ambitions. Thus, the United States of America was born. Thanks to the new ideas, managing such a vast country became easier. Strong roots of republicanism ensured even stronger presidents. A new system was devised, the American Republic. Power would be held firmly in the president's hand, yet with the support of the parliament, a plethora of new opportunities arose for the newborn American nation. Well, maybe not that many. The new nation needed a stronger merchant fleet, prompting the commencement of its effective expansion. America also exhibited high tolerance, where all religions were perhaps not acceptable, but tolerated truly remarkable tolerance. Americans first struck at Pacifico Norte to secure the western coast and wrest territories from the Spaniards. Next, they targeted Dutch colonies, which were burgeoning. The United States laid extensive claims to these territories. Women in the American Revolution. The first American president was a founding father. I don't know how to read this. P-Model. The war for Spanish possessions wasn't challenging and proceeded swiftly and efficiently. Further invasion of the Caribbean ensued to safeguard trade in America. Unfortunately, the conquest of the entire Caribbean irked most European empires. But we must come to terms with it, even if it's quite costly. Note, next time I must colonize it myself. As we have excellent relations with France, it decided to sell us Louisiana. Well, we have tragic relations with France, but it was decided to buy Louisiana nonetheless. Then the Aztecs, or rather now the Aztec United States moved towards Central America. At this point, the United States was already engaged in numerous wars with American tribes, as these tribes had federated into larger nations. After several decades, North America was subdued by the United States. Meanwhile, many factories were built in the empire, and many commercial buildings were modernized. An additional form of democracy was introduced, albeit requiring constant wars. This resulted in the American Republic boasting a high level of absolutism. It was crucial to develop proper trade centers, markets, and fleet along the entire east coast of America. Once the Aztecs, or rather now the Aztec United States, secured the entire North American continent, it was time to conquer several crucial provinces in India. And here quite a few monsters were spawned. The war began with the American army's attack on Sindh, which unfortunately had a much larger ally. However, modern American democracy prevailed. After capturing the monument in Doaba, it was decided to greatly expand it, resulting in a 55% autonomy in the territories. This allowed the Aztec United States to embark on the path of becoming an economic hegemon, which would also affect the minimum autonomy in the territories. In short, another governmental reform will soon be possible, further reducing the states in the United States. In the Aztec Empire, the temple of Chichen Itza was finally built, which will affect the size and quality of the army. The temple in Tikal was 
also expanded. Thanks to this and the sacrifices made there, the United States will be a more stable country. Is this something like the Hunger Games? Along with the expansion of town halls, the United States could have more states by now. But it cost us a lot of administrative efforts. The United States could also have a lot of Marines. Why not? The coalition immediately dissolved. The whole world trembles before the Marines from the United States, the Aztec United States. With the development of proper diplomacy, the Aztecs embarked on the path of global imperialism. And they were very interested in acquiring property in South America. Of course, imperialism cannot be done without a gigantic war fleet and a much larger transport fleet. After the expansion of the Great Fortress in Panama, separating both continents, it was time to build the Panama Canal to facilitate transportation and maritime navigation. I will never understand why conquering, being a country in North America, cost so many administrative points. But let it be. Ports in Tortuga were also expanded, allowing the Aztec Empire to effectively intercept enemy merchant ships. The Great Fortress in Cartagena was also expanded, which will positively impact the value of trade generated by Aztec merchant ships. In 1699, a bureaucracy reform was finally carried out in the United States, making state management even easier. Anyway, at this point, the Republic of the United States is a very specific republic, basically with military foundations. Because, you know, democracy must be spread in order to expedite the introduction of enlightenment institutions. Investment was made in education and the expansion of schooling in literally every province of the Aztec Empire. And after the last governmental reform, we finally have 25% autonomy in the country. In the territories, literally look, here is the territory, here is the autonomy. I guess you can't have less of it. And if it's different, write to me in the comments, of course. Taking advantage of the fact that English troops are not in England because they are at war elsewhere, the Aztec Empire began its invasion of England. Will it succeed this time? The road to England was really long in the attack. Off the coast of England, our fleet was attacked by the Dutch fleet, but it went down. There shouldn't have been that army here. So I guess the English army was indeed at home, and it's quite good too. Time to expand the transport fleet. Something is definitely wrong here. <coughs> In the meantime, anyway, in the United States, the process of transitioning to a wartime economy and building modern manufacturing workshops began, or I don't know how else to call it. And there were a lot of them built. There was a kind of stalemate in the war with England. The United States troops cannot land on the islands, and England cannot land on the continent. That's why the Aztecs additionally started an invasion of Iceland. So I changed my approach to invading the islands. Occupy the islands first, on the islands. What don't you understand? The Aztec Empire used its favorite tactic. Set bait, wait for the enemy to arrive and then sail out with the fleet and block the strait. This tactic was too perfect. Meanwhile, a revolution broke out in Turkey. Literally, a revolutionary Turk. Then, with a very clever maneuver, the fortress in Uster was taken, which was then abandoned so that the entire American army would already be in Great Britain. England! Really powerful English forces remained in Ireland, and after a while, American troops were already under London. Ultimately, the executive power was also increased in the United States, and the war with the English ended with the conquest of their wealthiest provinces. The war was unbelievably bloody, but thanks to them, the Aztec invasion finally began. This led to a technological change of units to some of the most powerful in the game currently. Thanks to this, the whole American tree, except for converting provinces, has been completed. And in this episode, I'm creating the most powerful hussar you've ever seen, Silesian, but it also draws from Prussian and Polish heritage.